G'day and welcome to my City Skylines 2 tutorial series. Check out the playlist in the description below to check out the other videos in this series. So one of the fundamental city services alongside water and sewage is electricity. Most buildings require electricity to function and citizens are not willing to suffer a lack of electricity for very long before moving out. Businesses across your city will lose most of their efficiency when deprived of electricity which causes their production and overall function to grind to a halt, eventually leading them to go out of business. City Skylines 2 features various different power plants from the green sustainable but quite expensive wind turbines, solar power plant, geothermal power plant, an hydroelectric power plant to the raw polluting power of fossil fuels in the form of the coal power plants and the gas power plant. The nuclear power plant represents the raw power of the atom, it's expensive but delivers enough electricity to power up almost any size or kind of city. You'll start your city with the basic electricity services which provide three main ways to service your electricity needs early in the game. And the further progress you make through the milestones, you'll have the opportunity to unlock power generating plants with larger and larger output. Before we dive in, it's important to note that in City Skylines 2, electricity is a little different and there are two types of electricity now. Low voltage electricity is what powers your buildings and in CS2 the roads even have low voltage cables built into them. See that yellow highlighted cable there? So you no longer need to run low voltage power lines all over the place, so long as the roads are connected to a power source, you're good to go. However, low voltage power lines, or electric cables as they're called in CS2, only have an 80 megawatt line capacity. So you can only transfer so much before high voltage heavy power lines are required. If you have two areas of your city only connected by low voltage power lines and the electricity needs to rise above 80 megawatts, you can expect rolling blackouts. Heavy power lines are what you need to use to transfer much larger amounts of electricity and have a capacity of 400 megawatts, so they should be used for connecting power plants to each other or two larger cities together on the same map. The cheapest way to power your city when starting off is to purchase your electricity from an outside connection. That way you're not funding upkeep or needing resources like coal transported into your city. To do this you need to build a transformer station at a cost of 30,000 credits which has a capacity of 80 megawatts but only costs 6,000 credits per month in upkeep. It requires high voltage input and in turn outputs low voltage electricity. So you need to connect a high voltage power line, this one here comes with the starting tile on this map, into the back of the transformer station. Then make sure that the station has a road connection and you'll see these yellow lines show the low voltage. Once it's hooked up, your road network is now powered and you can start building. You don't need to do anything else, you'll start importing electricity the moment you unpause the game. You can see under the electricity trade info that the import is increasing there and the bigger your city grows, the more you'll import up to the maximum capacity of this transformer. You can place multiple transformers down if you want to keep importing more, but this starts to become less cost effective as your city grows larger and larger. If you want to produce your own electricity, then you have two options to start with. The cheaper option being the small coal power plant, which will provide up to 20 megawatts of electricity with low and high voltage connections. We'll start with 5 tons of coal when you build it, but it can store up to 20 tons. It costs 70,000 credits a month in upkeep, but the downside is they generate lots of pollution. At a cost of 100,000 credits, it has a ground and air pollution rating of medium, so make sure you don't build it on a groundwater source or upwind of your residential area, or you'll make everybody sick. The small coal power plant needs to be connected to a road and will immediately start providing low voltage electricity. But if you hook a high voltage power line into the back, you can easily transport that power elsewhere as well. 
The small coal power plant has no building upgrades, so you need to build multiple if you want more than 20 megawatts of electricity. You can see from this one I've had built in the city for a little while, because I have the full amount of employees and because they're happy, I get a 14% boost to efficiency, which means it's producing nearly 23 megawatts instead of the normal 20 megawatts. So it's important to keep the sims in your city as happy as possible, as there's always little bonuses like this to be had. A greener option would be wind turbines. At a cost of 25,000 credits, each turbine will provide 0 to 5 megawatts of electricity, and this is because it's entirely dependent on wind speed. When you go to place these, you need to make sure you put them in the windiest place possible, and you get this handy estimate to show you how effective it's going to be before you put it down. Each turbine costs 15,000 credits per month in upkeep, so is a far more expensive option if you're looking for bigger power output. Wind turbines don't need a road connection, so you can place them anywhere within a purchase tile. One thing to keep in mind though, is that you'll need to connect them to each other with low voltage electric cables. You can use above or below ground versions, it's entirely up to you, and there are also no high voltage connections available to these. Once they're all connected, you'll need to provide a low voltage connection to a road somewhere if you want to power your city from them. Wind turbines have three building upgrades, which are all one-time upgrades. The solar assist is a solar panel which will provide an additional 0 to 2 megawatts of electricity per wind turbine for 25,000 credits and 3,000 credits a month in upkeep. But just remember, you'll only get this during the daylight hours. The advanced rotor system provides better rotors for 0 to 2.5 megawatt increase in electricity output for 15,000 credits and 5,000 credits per month upkeep. And the battery extension upgrade will provide a way for electricity to be stored when winds are low, providing a capacity of 10 megawatt hours, 4 megawatt output, costing 10,000 credits and a further 2,000 credits per month in upkeep. The gas power plant requires two development points to unlock and is required in order to ultimately progress to nuclear power. It'll need a road connection and costs 650,000 credits. It's fueled by natural gas, it's larger and more efficient than the small coal power plant with slightly less pollution. Its ground and air pollution are still rated at medium and it comes with one ton of petrochemicals with a capacity for 5 tons in total. It will produce 250 megawatts, has low and high voltage connections and will cost you 625,000 in credits in monthly upkeep. Gas power plants have 4 building upgrades available. The storage extension provides an additional 2.5 tons of petrochemical storage capacity at a cost of 200,000 credits with a monthly upkeep of 150,000 credits. This upgrade has no limit so you can place multiple of these around your power plant providing you have the space to do so whereas the next three upgrades are one-time upgrades only. The advanced furnace provides a more efficient burn process for the same power output, reducing resource consumption by 15% at a cost of 300,000 credits and a further 80,000 credits per month in upkeep. The exhaust filter reduces the air pollution by 50% for a cost of 150,000 credits and a monthly upkeep of 100,000 credits. And then the additional turbine provides 100 megawatts of additional energy production, which uses more fuel as well, costs 260,000 credits and a whopping 412,500 credits monthly upkeep. One thing to note is that some of these upgrades also require additional employees, and as you can see, my tutorial town is still quite small, so the efficiency has taken a hit as a result of not having enough employees to effectively run this power plant. The emergency battery station costs one development point to unlock and is the prerequisite for unlocking geothermal, hydroelectric or solar power plants. It's effectively a huge battery bank that stores vast amounts of electricity to negate the issues caused by blackouts or energy consumption spikes. It requires a road connection, and costs 150,000 credits, a further 50,000 credits per month in upkeep, 
and has a 500 megawatt hour capacity with a 200 megawatt output. It has low and high voltage connections and you can monitor the battery charge in the overlay when you click on the building. It comes with two building upgrades. The additional battery bank costs 75,000 credits, 7,500 credits in upkeep and for that we'll provide an additional battery capacity of 250 megawatt hours and 100 megawatts of output and is a one time only upgrade. Whereas the diesel generator you can place down multiple times it costs 24,000 credits with a 29,500 credit monthly upkeep, increases the operational efficiency of the station and provides one ton of petrochemical storage. The coal power plant requires four development points to unlock and is the prerequisite to unlocking the nuclear power plant. This will also require a road connection, costs a million credits with a 600,000 credit price tag in monthly upkeep. For that price you get a pretty large power plant that burns coal to produce electricity and is still considered inexpensive to build and maintain but is incredibly polluting. It produces 300 megawatts of electricity with low and high voltage connections, comes with 100 tons of coal and has 500 tons of coal storage capacity. It has 4 building upgrades. The coal storage yard which will cost 100,000 credits has a monthly upkeep of 25,000 credits and provides 1,500 tons of additional storage. This upgrade can be placed multiple times to keep increasing the storage providing you have room around your power plant to fit them all in. Whereas the next three upgrades are all one time only upgrades. The additional turbine costs 500,000 credits, 250,000 per month to upkeep and provides 100 megawatts of additional electricity production. The advanced furnace costs 250,000 credits, 60,000 per month to upkeep and reduces resource consumption by 15%. The exhaust filter reduces the air pollution by 50% for 200,000 credits and 50,000 credits per month in upkeep. The geothermal power plant requires two development points to unlock and generates its electricity from heat drawn from deep underground so therefore does not require a fuel source like other power plants. It will require a road connection and also a groundwater source and will create medium ground and air pollution including the pollution of the groundwater source. So keep that in mind, don't build a water extraction building on the same groundwater deposit. It costs 750,000 credits, has a monthly upkeep of 300,000 credits and will generate between 0 and 150 megawatts of power with low and high voltage connections. The electricity production will depend on the size of the groundwater reservoir but you should get an indication of the likely output as you hover over it before committing to build. It comes with three building upgrades. The high voltage substation costs 15,000 credits, 3,000 credits in monthly upkeep and provides for an additional power line to be added to the plant. These can be built multiple times and anywhere around the plant that you have space. The remaining two upgrades are one time only upgrades. The additional turbine costs 375,000 credits, 200,000 in upkeep per month and increases both the electricity production by 0 to 100 megawatts and adds another power line connection. The binary cycle power plant costs 250,000 credits, 75,000 per month in upkeep and adds 0 to 50 megawatts in electricity production. The solar power plant requires four development points to unlock and generates its electricity from sunlight. The electricity is stored in batteries during the daytime and then fed into your electricity network during the night. Because it relies on sunlight, weather can vastly impact its effectiveness so you need to keep that in mind if you're relying on it for your electricity production. It requires a road connection, costs 1.5 million credits and a further 300,000 credits per month in upkeep. It'll produce 0 to 200 megawatts, has a battery capacity of 50 megawatt hours, battery output of 15 megawatts and has low and high voltage connections. It comes with three building upgrades. The high voltage substation can be built multiple times, each time costing 15,000 credits and 6,000 in monthly upkeep and allows for an additional power line to be built from the plant. The advanced tracking system is a one time upgrade costing 600,000 credits and 150,000 per month in upkeep 
and will provide a further 0 to 100 megawatts of electricity production. And the backup battery upgrade can also be built multiple times, each time costing 45,000 credits, 42,000 in monthly upkeep, and has a battery capacity of 50 megawatt hours and battery output of 50 megawatts. The nuclear power plant costs 8 development points and will provide thermal nuclear power by way of nuclear fission. It generates vast amounts of power but also requires a lot of water to keep it cool, so keep that in mind if you don't have a strong water pumping network, you may need to think about upgrading that in order to keep this cool. It requires road access, will cost 5 million credits to build and a further million credits a month just in upkeep. For that, it'll produce 750 megawatts of electricity and has low and high voltage connections. It doesn't have any building upgrades, so what you see is what you get. It's a one-time only build as well, so you can't build a second one. You'll need to use it as part of a mixed electricity production network if you need more megawatt output than that. Hydroelectric power plants cost two development points and are effectively a dam that spans a river and uses the flow of water to generate electricity with its turbines. Like City Skylines 1, they can be a little tricky to build to get a decent amount of electricity production from them. The wider the water expands, and also building them between slightly elevated terrain, I find the more electricity you can generate from them. But once you play around with it, you'll be generating green energy to your heart's content. It comes with a road over the top and therefore you'll need to hook at least one side of that into your road network. It only has high voltage connections, so you'll need to connect it into your high voltage electricity network and convert that to low voltage using a transformer station. It'll cost 1.575 million credits to build and has a monthly upkeep of 100,000 credits and will produce anywhere between 0 and 20,000 megawatts. It has a battery capacity of 50 megawatt hours and a battery output of 15 megawatts. It also doesn't have any building upgrades. And there we go, an in-depth look at all the electricity options in City Skylines 2. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons so you don't miss out on the next one. And until next time, happy building!